What is up, you guys? And as well as the course, welcome to another course Pokemon Wi Fi battle. This time in the Battle of Pokemon League versus the Bearded BHMs or Majunk, aka Carl Oscar. Now, as you guys saw already, we have a shorter intro this time it's because I got a bit of a copyright strike on the lengthier one. Shorting it down a bit, mainly because while I do think it's epic and while I don't earn any money on these videos anyway, I don't mind getting demonetized on them, but it should be stated that I do lose traction on these videos, so if I get a mon those kind of strikes, um, less people will find me. Uh, so with that said, you know, we shorten it down, see if it helps. Uh, I got some some help basically telling me that, you know, we shorten it down the first second, it might actually prove to be useful. If not, then, you know, we shorten it down even more in the next video, and you guys clearly will find out whether or not that happened. Anyway, you know, that was a 40 second recording about nothing. Now, as you guys see, we're not making some kind of uh, extra finicky thing here to explain, you know, about the team we're facing, because quite frankly, most people skip it, and I find that quite right. I do the same thing, so, you know, I, I don't hold that against you, but I'm gonna do a short rundown of the people that are interesting in what I'm facing, and what I'm prepping, and whatnot, and you see on the screen, this is what we're facing. And uh, the things we're seeing here that are missing are two Pokemon that stand out. Uh, one Pokemon definitely was prepped before was Tangrowth, which didn't make it, and the other one I can't remember, so clearly wasn't that exciting. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Karolska did change his team quite a lot since then, so that's why I kind of um, feel it's unnecessarily, because at the same time, we already shifted the teams, so I can't remember what teammates it did have. That said, though, uh, we're squaring up against Pokemon I did predict, was was Forest Rest, Tornadoes, Flygon, Tabu Koko, and Mega Gallade. These are the ones that stood out to me as Pokemon that could be extremely important towards me, and Mega Gallade definitely keeps Bus Wall away, and of course, clearly, Tornadoes keeps the Bus Wall away quite a lot. <laughs> Though Bus Wall outside, I would have been pretty darn epic. So my team here, pretty darn, it's, it's darn good, actually. I really like this team. It's, um, it's banking on Carl Oscar's mistakes. We have a Focus Sash lead, um, Ninetales, with uh, Hit Apart Fire and uh, basically Halo, you know, Freeze Star and whatnot. He doesn't have a decent switch into a Freeze Star or Blizzard. The only ones he do have is actually for Redress, who are pretty much o code by uh, Hidden Power Fire, unless his special defense, and even at that, we can survive it if it is his lead. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure he doesn't get any Stealth Rocks out. Uh, outside of that, we have Jolteon, which is special defensive with some special attack and able to outspeed a modest type of Koku and Celestial. Uh, oh yeah, that was the other teammate. Hey, I knew, I knew it was something. <laughs> so anyway, it's a decent Pokemon in this kind of environment, and with leftovers, you should be able to check any kind of special threat he does throw at me. Uh, Tentacruel, Scarf version, because he doesn't have a switch and he can deal with a Scarf Tentacruel. Spamming Sludge Bomb should do very well once Fortress is gone. Uh, this is Jai, Spirit Shackle, and Toxic, Roost, and Defog, able to deal with any kind of hazard it thinks goes down the shitter. Um, and of course, lock in Tangrowth, which didn't make it, and Toxic Solid, so that's really unfortunate. A uh, Guard Chomp, uh, Scarf variant with um, you know, the standard stuff, and Stealth Rocks, Outrage, I believe. No Dragon Claw, sorry, Earthquake, and Fire Blast. Uh, and Lopunny is a fake out, last resort. Oko's his whole team. Um, it actually, the only thing that then that can take that on is actually Fred Rest, and even at that, that's not highly unlikely. I am adamant though, so I'm banking on um, his type of Koku, so hopefully not be fully speedy, because it wouldn't make sense for him to bring a fully speedy one since I have the law upon anyway. So like I said, I am banking his mistake. Last resort here, Oko's his whole team, barring the Fred Rest, and the only thing that possibly could take it is Gallade. He can take, uh, or as a um, 98.3% of KOing if it's a standard Gallade set. If it's any bulkier, then you know, it's going to survive it, possibly, but it's highly unlikely. Like I said, 98.3% is what we're aiming at. And of course, Rotom Wash can take that hit too. I do believe it takes roughly 70. So, last resort combination here, Lopane, is something that definitely will bring the pain once I can bring that safely. That said, you know, says we're steadfast, and I believe something like Justified on Gallade, I can't do it against it, but I can do it against everything else. I don't want to get, you know, giving Gallade a speed boost, probably we'll wrap up the game before we even started. Uh, and of course, I need to watch out the possible Scarf, we cannot speed law honey. Such a flag on, who definitely felt like a possible Scarf here, even Tapu Koku to some extent. It would be weird, but I wouldn't be surprised if that comes. So, anyway, with all of this said, let's, of course, go into the match. So from the get-go here, we do get the ideal lead. He's gonna actually lead off with Fortress. So all I was really hoping was that, yo, please, 
please Satan, let me get that hidden power far on you you know that's really all i wanted as you know we get all you know the, the residual damage the rain the snow whatever i don't know um which is really <laughs> really good uh now go for the hidden power fire it's not a straight okay which means that you know he's clearly special defensive luckily for me though he goes for gyrable not stealth rocks well you know it's debatable but one of the things definitely for sure would do survive this uh, what's also really good is that I can now freely go for Blizzard or anything else and I can do heavy amount of damage towards this team anyway outside of course possible uh, Road and Watch which definitely wasn't coming in so we care that thing, you know, get out of here bitch as <laughs> as the Yellow Angel comes in the Rotom now I would straight up care for anything I rolled a sack or say it as a sack father so I'm actually gonna say send in my uh, Jolteon here, hoping, no, sorry, uh, Consight, uh, predicting the U-turn over Volt Switch. Either way, both would have been fine, but we see that he's not physically defensive, so that's really good. Um, he's probably more especially defensive than anything. As Tornadoes comes in, uh, look, I, I can't do anything against Tornadoes, and Hurricane will do a significant amount of damage at me, and since Rotom Wash is still in a good amount of health, I can't risk this play just yet, so I'm going to be forced to switch out. Predicting actually knockoff here, I'm actually gonna go for Van Heights, hoping it doesn't do it too much. As it goes for Bull Cup, and that's way better. Uh since that means one thing, and really one thing only, that you know he's KO'd here. There is no way of him actually doing well versus this matchup because we do outspeed him. Bull Cup means that you know he's probably you know the acrobatics set with superpower or knockoff, or knockoff feels more uh in his his alley, and probably don't need to worry about Hurricane, which is really good. Uh, so it brings in Torrents, which is a rolling wash, and this is good because we get a very heavy hit of Thunderbolt, and this secure that a last resort will KO him. I really want to say that this is definitely in the KO range area. So Rotom now is gone too, and I didn't even need to bait that out. As uh, I'm gonna bring in Consight, basically want to see what he's gonna do. As we see light screens, so this this was actually really good, uh, mainly because if he brings light screen, that might be meaning that he has reflect too. So with that in mind, I rather toxic him than KO him. I actually want him to pivot out of here. Uh, because he's most likely a Volt Switch or going to U-turn out himself. So we see the Reflect, really good, really good indeed as we get for Toxic. And as stated here, all I'm going to do from here on out is actually go for a Defog, because if the Masters are up, then, you know, I can't sweep with the Last Resort. That's that's to be expected. But at this point, Lopane looks to be able to sweep, and we're only all six turns in. And like I said, I barely, like... Uh, barring the first turn there, there was really nothing I did here to actually get to this position, which really, really felt so awesome. We can we can sweep now, as I'm just going to need to bring Law Pony in freely, and the only way for me of doing so is basically sack something. And you remember the Alone Light Tales I was saving? Yeah, this is time to sack that guy, if anything. So we get every screen off, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, I said that we saw a bulk up, so I know already that it's acrobatics and knockoff. Knockoff seems to be the obvious play, it doesn't matter, he's definitely going to attack me, if anything, as I'm going to bring in Sol there. If he doesn't attack me, uh, funny enough, um, I actually have a chance of, depending on his set, to actually outspeed him and go for a blizzard. We don't get to find that out though, which is unfortunate, his soul is going to fall, but then at the same time, she did exactly what she needed to do, and that was working quite right for me. As uh, so I'm going to ring in Tifa, basically all I'm going to do from here on out is uh, go for the fake out and then activate the last resort, and that should be the wrap. Uh, so it brings in Torrent, that's fair enough, as we're going to KO, of course, this poor, poor Rodan Wash. Little did he know that he was a shit that was remaining. Little did he know uh, it basically was his downfall, since, of course, the fake out is going to KO here. Uh, his response here is actually afterwards to go to Galade, and as stated, Galade has a small chance of surviving. Uh, 98.3%, which is really, really, really all right. We don't need to worry about anything here. I am feeling fine as he goes for Mega Evolution and... I really hate this game. I really hate this game. <laughs> it's alright though, we're still in a fire spot, no hail got him, so it's alright, but we didn't get the sweep we really wanted. As I bring in the Van Height, as it brings Yellow Angel. Now, this is basically it. I need to find a way to will down Toe Kokono, which is something I didn't think I needed to, because we already know that we actually outspeed him 
uh, which means he's not faster than Lopane, which is really good. Uh, Hidden Power Ice doesn't do too many things. So I actually was going for that, thinking they was faster. He wasn't that, and that's even kind of plays the guard even further that Lopane would have been able to carry out this Pokemon directly. As to bring in favorite here, which is a Flygon, uh, I'm gonna keep on going at it. I'm pretty sure since it didn't bring this Rayonetta versus Lopane that it's not Scarfed, which means Hidden Power Ice would will definitely KO this Pokemon to anything. Uh, as it switches this out directly, go back to the Yellow Angel. And I do keep going for the hidden powers. Uh, and this is basically where I sort of realized that, you know, I need to go for Thunderbolt. I need to get the heavy amount of damage towards this Pokemon. This is the only way I'm going to be able to wheel this Pokemon down. Um, as Thunderbolt is doing a lot of damage. It is really close of KOing. Sadly, it's not enough. As it switches out, to go directly again to the Flygon. And um, fr from here on out, all I really can do is uh, go for hidden power eyes yet again. We already got some you know, decent ship damage with hail and whatnot on it, and I don't fear Flygon, I'm definitely sure Hidden Power Ice should kill. And it probably would, had I been fully offensive, which I'm not, because I am still not fully special attack. Which means he survived this hit, and uh, at plus two, Flygon will actually be able to sweep me from here on out, or basically I have no way of taking that hit. But he's forced to go for, um, for Earthquake, I should definitely have thought about that, and not sack Jolteon. Because the ultimate was very, very key of me actually wrapping up the game because he had no way of killing that Pokemon. So I think this sack was really wrong. I should definitely have sacked something else. Hell, I should probably just switch in Garchomp and just take the hit and then I retaliate. They would have been able to capitalize on that. As I bring in a Saxers, uh, and I was thinking for myself here, you know, he probably switch out. He probably goes into um, his Yellow Angel, and uh, he does. And uh, then I do another big miss uh, prediction here and I actually hope that he's going to go for a U turn, knowing that. Uh, you know, he probably dies if he stays in, as he actually hit him power ice, and that's enough to KO too, because he's modest, not timid, and I was I was actually just banking on timid when I was calculating, so I didn't actually check the damage. Uh, so I bring Calypso here, which is scarfed, and basically all I'm thinking here, I should just go for Ice Beam, that should be able to uh, hopefully wrap up the game. Tornadoes is still a like good, good amount of health, but it feels alright, it feels definitely alright, as uh, Code Green comes in, and um, yeah... It might be a bit too healthy, and his play here is definitely go for knockoff. As I go for Ice Beam, it does do a good chunk, but it is not enough as knockoff is going to, of course, get rid of the Scarf, and all of thinking, oh my god, he's going to go, he's definitely going to go for rest, and he has Chesto for sure. And uh, yeah, what I'm trying to say is uh, I actually choke this game away. Um, quick rundown here, what actually did happen, because I definitely think... Uh, Carl Oscar makes a very strong comeback here. He really does. I'm not going to take that away from him. I feel that would be extremely unfair because, quite honestly, the comeback here is really, really, really good. Um, the only thing, you know, I'm kicking myself over this loss because I know the, the game was in my hand. I could have played this game very differently and a much, much safer way than I decided to do. And consider the outcome of the game, I probably should have done it. I most certainly should have done it. So yeah, a quick rundown. I really just need to speak of my mind because, as I stated here, I played very, very badly once uh, Lopane went down for me. It should be stated here, you know, the roles, th this was a very Pokemon-ish battle in that sense that, you know, I don't get the role in my favor and there's a very big role in my favor. Uh, this should not have happened, but it did. Uh, and it's definitely my fault considering I got the confirmation that it was a jolly set. Um... I, I really can't say that enough, you know, it's it's a luck on Carl Oscar's side most certainly, but at the same time, I could have played this game a lot safer and I would have been just fine. You know, the hail damage towards um, Galay would have been enough. Had I sacked play, um, well, Garchomp or um, Decidueye before and get the hail damage on it, I would have been a much scarier spot versus it, and I would have definitely been able to threaten it out with my remaining mons, such of course Jolteon. Um, that should definitely be stated. There was a safe series of play here that would make me win 3-0 instead of 5-0, uh, as I was thinking I was going to do. Um, I got a bit greedy, was aiming for that 5-0, and it all backfired spectacularly on me. Uh, the same thing here, Jolteon versus Flygon. Look, it's fair for me of actually assuming that it wasn't Scarf for this Wi-Fi Bell. Um, that should definitely be stated, uh, since it didn't switch in versus Law Pony, I do believe that would have been the right response to make. Uh, so with that said, I it was fair for me to keep going for Hidden Power Ice, what wasn't a fair play was that no matter how I twisted and turned this situation, it should be stated that I would have been much stronger off switching into my guard chomp. If it went for another Dragon Dance, yes, he could have KO'd, possibly, if he had Outrage, which if he had Dragon Claw, that would have been actually quite right. Uh, but he was forced to attack there, because if not, Jolting was going to KO. 
So Earthquake was the right play. Um, I failed to see that. I failed to see how good Jolteon really was at that point. I was thinking I could sack play, go to Tentacruel, wrap up. And forgetting how well healthy Tornadoes was, I was definitely playing that part badly. And there is no way of me of actually saying anything else. It's the truth. I played the last part pretty darn bad. I basically, you know, I reached my hand out to Carlosco, you know, it's not over. Try one more time. I give him a second wind. And he got it. He did exactly the right series of play to make a comeback. And he, by that alone, he deserves to win. He played all the turns of this battle. I stopped playing once Lop and it went down. Because I thought I had a secure win no matter what. Which clearly I didn't. So Carlos Carino, you know, as always, great game. Um, I was a little bit frustrated after this battle. And uh, for that I am sorry. Um, that I, if that really rubbed on me, I don't think it did that, but I was really frustrated mainly because I really thought I did nothing wrong. But looking back at this game, yeah, you know, I played my first 10 turns perfectly. Uh, Karloska had no chance from turn one, basically, but then I stopped playing and goofed this thing. I choked really hard, and uh, Karloska just made one of the strongest comebacks I ever seen. So, for what it's worth, Really good job, Carl. That was that was great. That was really good on you. Um, but as a guys, thank you, of course, as all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this loss. It was definitely a different wipe out from my side. I was definitely going hyper offense and then basically just kicking it back, hoping I would win. That is not how Pokemon works, and this battle clearly shows that you know you have to play all the turns, not just the first 10. So that's it, guys. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care, and as always.